I'm about to do a pair of blocks for the Designs by Juju's Fall Table Runner. I want to do some editing in my Embrilliant software to do some color sorting and minimize my presence at the machine on my multi-needle as much as possible. So I am going to uh, come up here to preferences on my window and make sure I have my 360 by 200 millimeter multi-needle hoop selected, and I do. And so I'm going to come here and I'm going to go into my DBJJ fall table runner. I want to do the grateful blocks and I'm going to do the one for the 6 by 10 and bring them in just by dragging and dropping them into the field. Now, this looks like two different embroidery designs, but it's not. If you take a look over here in the object panel, there is only one embroidery design. And when you click on each portion of the design, you can see what it is because it will be highlighted over here on the screen. So here is a batting placement, batting tack down, fabric tack down, background crosshatch quilting, and then there is the grateful letters, the swirl, the leaves, and the berries. And then take a look here. The first one is deep rows. And look, once we've gone through this one, this next one is deep rows. And if you go back and forth, it does the exact same sequence again on each one of these. They're identical. They're just turned opposite directions. The instructions have you put them this close together, and then you are supposed to take the fabric in the middle and tape it up out of the way so that one or the other can stitch and not have fabric get stitched down where it's not supposed to. So what I want to do is move one of these or both of these so that there's enough space between them that they can not require having to be taped up and out of the way. I want to color sort them so that we'll do the batting placement lines for both of them at the same time. We'll do the batting tack down at the same time. We'll do the fabric tack down at the same time, etc. So you can see there are 16 different thread changes in these pieces right here. So if you try to move one by clicking on the design, they all highlight and you're going to move them both. You need a software like Embrilliance Enthusiast that allows you to edit stitches in order to be able to separate these and move them. The way Embrilliance works is you would first get Embrilliance Essentials. And if you only have Embrilliance Essentials, you will not see this little icon right up here. If you have Embrilliance Enthusiast, you will see this little icon. It looks like a triangle with a little dot on it. And that is to edit stitches. Now, you're not going to overwhelm your computer with adding different modules of Embrilliance to your computer. Because believe it or not, you already have all of the modules that make up the entire Embrilliance platform. But your serial number, when you registered it, only allows you to see certain icons that are in the program. When you purchased Enthusiast and you register your serial number, now you're going to be able to see this icon right here, which allows you to edit stitches. It's a brilliant concept of how to do this. So I've had people ask, if I get another module of Embrilliance, is it going to overwhelm my system? No, it is not. You're just allowed to do more with it is all that that is. So let me quit rambling on about Embrilliance and let's edit these stitches. So I'm going to click the edit stitches icon and you get a whole new menu down here that you couldn't see before. And this is a free motion select tool and this is a rectangular select tool. I'm going to click on the rectangle. 
I'm going to highlight this top panel and it looks like it's all been selected. And I'm going to come up to this other button right here and it says cut the stitches and separate into a new design. So I'm just going to click that. And now let's look. Back over here, we have just eight stitches from deep rose all the way down to the amber red. And now we have another design and it's called split. And if we click on this, here is the rest of the stitches in the split design. Isn't that so cool? All right. So now what I want to do is I'm going to highlight split and I'm going to click off the edit stitches icon because it's a little hard to see and move things around when that is on. And I'm just going to grab a hold of this and I'm going to drag it over here and move it up. And then I want to highlight the lower block and I'm going to drag it down here and move it down. Now, when you get ready to stitch this out, you need to keep in mind that you need to be able to trim these blocks to within one half inch of this outer stitch line right here. So I really want these to be this far apart. If this is actually two inches apart. I have plenty of room down here and I've got plenty of room over here and there's two inches right here. So that means I can put my two fabric panels exactly along the center line of the hoop and I'm going to mark it with a friction marker on my stabilizer and that way I know where exactly to put these. But I also know that when I pull them out of the hoop and trim them, here's that extra half inch because if you look over here on the side on the ruler, these lines are an inch apart. So I'll be able to trim these right here so I can set, I can butt the two fabric pieces up together in the middle of the hoop and I still have enough room all the way around to trim one half inch away from the stitch line. Okay, so now I know that they're in the right location and now what I want to do is color sort these. So I'm going to go control A to select all on the screen and you can see this one's selected and the split is selected and I'm going to come over here to utility and color sort. So remember we've got eight stitches in each one of these so this is a total of 16 uh, color changes or st individual stitch outs that are in these two blocks. I'm going to go to color sort and it's sorting and look right here, the design page has been reduced by nine color changes. So don't click save it, click new view. If you click save it, you're going to mess up your original. If you click new view and you don't like what happened, you can close this box out and go back to the old one. So now if you look over here in the objects panel, we no longer have two, we have one. And let's look at it. I'm going to click the plus sign to expand it. We only have seven color changes now. Look at that. Here's our batting placement lines. They're going to stitch at the same time. Here's our batting tack down line. They're going to stitch at the same time. Here's our fabric tack down line. It's going to stitch at the same time. Here is the background quilting, the cross hatching design, our grateful letters berries back here. We've got the letters and the berries. These are designed to be the same color. Here's the swirl and there's our leaves. Look at that. So we have decreased the design by nine color changes. We've moved the design farther apart. So as soon as it's finished with the fabric tack down, I'm done with it and I can just let Spanky do his thing. So I'm going to save this now to a USB and I'm going to go file, save stitch file as. My USB is here and I've already been playing with this. I called it grateful and spread since they are spread apart. 
Okay, so I'm just going to overwrite this particular design that I was playing with by highlighting it and, and uh, make sure that the file type down here is the right file type for your home embroidery machine. If you click the drop down arrow, you can see that all home embroidery machine file types will work within Brilliance. And I'm at PES, I'm just going to click save. And it says it already exists. The grateful dash spread already exists. Do I want to replace it? I'm going to tell it yes. And that's it. So now I can remove the USB and take it over to the machine and get stitching. So I'm going to take my USB drive. This is a power tools with thread USB. I like this so I can keep all my embroidery separate from my other USB sticks and this is the main screen for the Brother PR 1055. It's a 10 needle Entrepreneur Pro and from this home screen I'm going to touch USB and I am looking for that grateful spread and it's right here. It has it vertically and it says it's too large and do I want to turn it 90 degrees so I'm just going to touch that and it loads and you can tell this is the right one because they're farther apart than the way like this one right here here's the blessed and they're right side by side this is the way it came from uh, designs by Juju but I have moved them apart so right now I'm gonna tell it set because I've chosen the right design in this mode this is an editing mode you can change the size you can rotate you can mirror you can do all kinds of stuff I don't need to do any of that so I'm just gonna hit edit end and then here is where I need to tell the machine what threads to use and when to stop so that I can do whatever it is I need to do to make the applique happen so there are three spools of thread right here I'm gonna to touch that these are thread color changes. Here's a preview window and you can see there's one out of seven. So if I touch each one and they're numbered one through seven, this is uh, can be changed because it's right now it's telling you what color it's going to use. This is just a default setting. So as you can see right here, like I have anchored color number one to be a golden yellow. Well, the machine doesn't know that it's going to be a golden yellow until I tell it to be the golden yellow. So these numbers right here, when you first pull up in this edit, in this mode, are just the thread color change numbers. Here are your spool numbers. These 10 right here are your 10 spools. So you can see as I go through, like there's the cross hatching on stitch number four. So you can always look at the preview and this number right here to see where you're at. Now another thing that's really odd about the way this works is in order to program the stop, you want your hand to be before the stitch it's about to take as opposed to after the one it just took. It's a little weird. So like after stitch number one, which is the placement line for the batting, you would think you wanted it to stop and you would put a, a hand you can put a hand right there to tell it to stop so there's your hand but if you do that it'll stop before the design even gets started so instead of telling it to stop after the one you just stitched you need to tell it to stop before the one you're going to stitch it's just a flip-flop for some reason so number one is a batting placement line and I want that to be the yellow so I'm going to touch spool number one here's how the spools are organized on top of the machine so we have one two three four five etc so I want this to be spool number one I have anchored these colors in the settings I'm not going to show how to do that right now so now I'm going to go to number two and before it stitches number two, I want it to stop so that I can put down the batting. I want number two to also be yellow. And then it's going to go to number three, which is the tack down for the fabric. This first stitch is the placement line for the batting. Number two is the tack down for the batting. Number three is the tack down for the fabric. 
I want that to also be yellow and before it stitches yellow I want it to stop so I can put my fabric down. Once the fabric's down I'm done with all the interaction that I need to do with this machine. So as soon as it stitches down the fabric the next color it's going to do is going to be for the cross hatching and I want that to be number one as well. And then the next stitch is the grateful. I want that to be spool number nine which is a dark orange and that is going to be the grateful and the little berries next to the leaves. Stitch number six is the little swirlies and I want that to be spool number four pretty green that'll be nice and then number seven is the leaves and that is a dark green and that's spool number seven and then it'll be finished so I'm all done so can you let's go through this one more time you always want to double check your work this is a quick one so sp stitch number one placement line for the batting before it gets to the tack down I want it to stop and that's going to stitch in the yellow and then before it goes on I want it to stop so I can put my fabric down and then it's going to stitch the fabric down in yellow the tack down my cross hatching my grateful in the berry my swirls and my leaves and that's it and I'm going to tell it okay and now I'm going to touch embroidery and we're ready to go I've marked my crosshair on my stabilizer so I know how to put my fabric pieces so that they don't go past but yet I'll still have enough room to trim the block out. I have a brand new magnetic Filtech bobbin in the bobbin case. I have put a drop of oil in there which you're supposed to do every day and we're ready to go. It looks like this is going to take 34 minutes to stitch out this entire design. So in order to make it go I'm just going to touch the lock button and go.
All right, we're all done. I'm gonna press OK. Just look at this. Man, this turned out great. Oh, yeah. Really makes a difference to put that SF-101 on the back. That's a Pellon product. I'll link to it below. But I have no puckering whatsoever. That's a trick I have learned off of some other projects that I've done recently. And I really, really like the outcome. And it doesn't add any kind of weight, like a batting or anything. So I'm going to trim these out. You need to make six blocks, so three hoopings of two of the blocks with up to just the crosshairs and no letters or leaves or anything like that. So I'm going to go back into my three spools right here. And I just need these first four stitches to happen. So if I touch this one right here, there's my cross hatching. I'm going to go to this one and over here on the side under the hand there's a little do not stitch I'm gonna to touch that and look the letters went away and now I'm gonna do the swirlies do not stitch and the leaves do not stitch so now all that's gonna stitch are the first four and so I don't have to go back into a brilliance and do this all over again just for this block. But I can do the editing on the machine. And if you're on a single needle, you just stop stitching after you get finished with the first four stitches. And just run it three more times just like this. So I'm gonna do that right now. All right, we'll talk to you soon. Go sew something, bye. <music>